We're going to be looking at steam-powered cycles, more specifically Rankine regenerative cycles. The problem statement we have is an ideal regenerative Rankine cycle is operating at a maximum pressure of 10 megapascals and a maximum temperature of 550 degrees C. They tell us that steam is extracted from the turbine at 1 megapascal and our condenser operates at 10 kPa. They ask us to find the thermal efficiency assuming the cycle uses an open feed water heater. What this looks like is we have a pump that goes to an open feed water heater to a second pump into our boiler through our first turbine. Then steam is extracted. We go through our second turbine and then through our condenser. The steam that's extracted here gets mixed in our open feed water heater over here. We're going to call this over here point 0.1, point 0.2, point 0.3, point 0.4, point 0.5, point 0.6, and point 0.7. If we draw this on a TS diagram, it looks something like this. We have our low pressure of 10 kPa, our extraction pressure of 1 megapascal, and our boiler pressure of 10 megapascals. So we go through our first pump here, we get mixed, we go to our second pump over here, we heat up through the boiler, then through the first turbine, and then through the second turbine over here, and we have flow going in this direction like this. If we put points over here, this would be point 1, point 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. We've actually been given the enthalpy at different points of the process in this problem. We're told that the enthalpy at 1, right before the boiler, is 762.6 kilojoules per kilogram. The enthalpy at 2, right after the boiler, is 3,000. 501.9. The enthalpy at 3, right at our steam extraction, is 2,856.9. The enthalpy at 4, right before our condenser, is 2,139.3. The enthalpy at 5, right before our first pump, is 191.8. The enthalpy at 6, after our first pump, is 192. 0.8 and the enthalpy at 0.7 right after our open feed water heater is 762.5 and all of these are in kilojoules per kilogram. They want us to solve for the thermal efficiency of this system. We can write that the thermal efficiency is equal to the work net divided by Q in. And we can say that the work net is equal to the work of the turbine 1 plus the work of the turbine 2 minus the work of the pump, divided by the heat added to the system. What we're going to do is we're going to assume that the work of the pump is negligible or it's approximately equal to zero. We can say that the work of the turbine 1 is equal to the mass flow rate times the enthalpy at 2 minus the enthalpy at 3. The work of turbine 2 is equal to the mass flow rate minus some sort of mass fraction here because we have steam being extracted, times the enthalpy at 3 minus the enthalpy at 4. And then the heat added to our system here is going to be our full mass flow rate times the enthalpy at 2 minus the enthalpy at 1. If we say that our mass fraction divided by our mass flow rate is equal to y, we get that our thermal efficiency is equal to m dot h2 minus h3 plus m dot 1 minus y times h3 minus h4 divided by m dot h2 minus h1. And then we cancel out our mass flow rate here. And we get that our thermal efficiency is equal to h2 minus h3 plus 1 minus y, h3 minus h4, divided by 
H2 minus H1. We're given the enthalpy at all these different points in their system, but we're not given any information about our mass fraction here. So in order to figure it out, we're going to look at our open feed water heater. What's happening here is we have a fraction of our mass coming here. So we have m dot minus our mass fraction. And this here is at 0.6. We have coming in from over here our mass fraction, m dot. And this is at 0.3. And then finally, coming out, we have our full mass flow rate. And this is at 0.7. So if we say that the energy coming in is equal to the energy coming out, we can rewrite this as m dot enthalpy at 7 is equal to m dot minus mass fraction enthalpy at 6 plus mass fraction enthalpy at 3. Now, remember we said that the work of the pump was equal to 0. So what that means is that our enthalpy at 6 is actually going to be the same as our enthalpy at 5. And remember that we said m dot f over m dot is equal to y. So with a little bit of algebraic manipulation, we can get that y is equal to h7 minus h6 divided by h3 minus h6. And remember, we said that h6 is equal to h5, so we're going to say that this is actually h7 minus h5 divided by h3 minus h5. And we get that our mass fraction y is equal to 762.5 minus 191.8 divided by 2856.9 minus 191.8. And we get a mass fraction of 0.2141. Now that we have all the information we need, we're ready to solve for our thermal efficiency. If you recall, we said that thermal efficiency was equal to H2 minus H3, which was the work of our turbine 1, plus 1 minus Y, H3 minus H4, which was the work of our second turbine, divided by H2 minus H1. This gives us 3,501.9 minus 2,856.9 plus 1 minus 0 0.2141 times 2,856.9 minus 2,139.3 divided by 3,501.9 minus 762.6 and our thermal efficiency is 0 0.4413, or 44.13%. What if the enthalpies weren't given? Would we still be able to solve this problem? The answer is yes. We're given that the maximum pressure and maximum temperature are 10 megapascals and 550 degrees C. So we have P1 is equal to P2 is equal to 10 megapascals and T2 is equal to 550 degrees C. We're told that steam is extracted at 1 megapascal. What that means is that we have P6 is equal to P7 is equal to P3 is equal to 1 megapascal. So P6 is equal to P7 is equal to P3 is equal to 1 MPa. And we're told that the condenser operates at 10 kPa. So P4 is equal to P5 is equal to 10 kPa. P4 is equal to P5 is equal to 10 kPa. So before we go through our pump here, our first pump, we know that at 0.5 we have 100% saturated fluid. So that means that the enthalpy at 5 is equal to 191.8 kilojoules per kilogram. And this is equal to the enthalpy at quality equal to 0 and 10 kPa. We also know that the entropy from 5 to 6 is constant, so the entropy at 6 is equal to the entropy at 5. And this is equal to 0 0.6493 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. 
and this is equal to the entropy at a quality of 0 and 10 kPa. With this information, we can find that the enthalpy at 6 is equal to 192.8 kilojoules per kilogram, and this is equal to the enthalpy at an entropy of 0 0.6493 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin and 1 megapascal because our pressure has increased. We can also say that at 0.7, we have once again 100% saturated fluid, so the enthalpy at 7 is equal to 762.5 kilojoules per kilogram, and this is equal to the enthalpy at a quality of 0 and 1 megapascal. With this information, we can find the the entropy at 7 to be equal to the entropy at 1, and this is equal to 2.1387 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin, and this is equal to the entropy at a quality of 0 and 1 megapascal. With this information, we can find that the enthalpy at 1 is equal to 762 0.6 kilojoules per kilogram, and this is equal to the enthalpy at an entropy of 2.1387 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin and a pressure of 10 megapascals. Because we know our maximum pressure and temperature, we can easily find the enthalpy at 0.2 to be 3,501.9 kilojoules per kilogram. And this is actually the enthalpy at 10 megapascals and 550 degrees C. Now, we said that through our turbine we have constant entropy. That means that the entropy at 2 is equal to the entropy at 3 is equal to the entropy at 4. And this we find to be equal to 6.7561 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. And this is the entropy at 10 megapascals and 550 degrees C. With this information, we can find that the enthalpy at 3 is equal to 2,856.9 kilojoules per kilogram. And this is the enthalpy at an entropy of 6.7561 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin and a pressure of 1 megapascal. We can also find that the entropy at 4 is equal to 2,139.3 kilojoules per kilogram, and this is the enthalpy at an entropy of 6.5, sorry, 6.7561 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin, and a pressure of 10 kPa. We now have all of our different enthalpies. We can go ahead, get our mass fraction, and solve for our efficiency. What if we decide to not neglect the work of the pump in order to find our thermal efficiency? We said thermal efficiency was equal to work net divided by Q in, and this would be equal to work of turbine 1 plus work of turbine 2 minus work of pump 1 minus work of pump 2 divided by our Q in. We said that the work of turbine 1 was equal to our mass flow rate, H2 minus H3. The work of turbine 2 was equal to our mass flow rate minus our mass fraction, H3 minus H4. And if we look over here, our mass fraction still hasn't been added back into our, into our system when we go through pump 1. So we can find that the work of pump 1 is equal to our mass, our mass flow rate minus our mass fraction times H6 minus H5. And then the work for our second pump Everything's mixed back together. We have our full mass flow rate. We have m dot times h1 minus h7. And then our heat added to our system is still full mass flow rate, h2 minus h1. If you remember, we also said that our max fraction divided by our mass flow rate is equal to y. So if we use a bit of algebra, we can write that our thermal efficiency is equal to h2 minus h3 plus 1 minus 
y, h3 minus h4, minus 1 minus y, h6 minus h5, minus h1 minus h7, and all of this is divided by h2 minus h1. Now, we also have to remember that when we were neglecting the work of the pump, we said that our mass fraction y was equal to h7 minus h5 divided by h3 minus h5. This is no longer true. We need to be consistent, so we're going to say that it's actually equal to h7 minus h6 over h3 minus h6.